This weekend, the Nyrox Foundation, in collaboration with ArtLogic and MasterCard, launches the Winter Sculpture Fair 2014. We took a walk through the sculpture park one sunny winter morning, the perfect opportunity to experience the cradle of humankind at its finest, and met a few of the artists taking part in this landmark exhibition. We're here with Liddell Moe. You uh, have been camping in Starkfontein. Um, well, when I received the invitation from Benji, um, I looked at the lay of the land and a bit of the history of this area, which is the paleoanthropological mecca. Um, and I've been working with cement and sand and different aggregates for over 20 years now. And I thought, what an amazing idea to go into the landscape work from the site, live in the landscape, and dig up the, the dirt and the soil from the landscape into the, and mix it with the cement and then create sculptures while living and working there. So, um, the work speaks about our dependence on two worlds, two value systems, um, one based in materials and one based in information technology. It's really close to our hearts being from South Africa where our economy is largely based in um, copper. And um, the pattern is a, if, if you look on an aerial photograph of animals on a, uh, going towards a salt plant, they leave these tracks. What's the idea behind the percussion box? Well, the idea is that it's a, a functional piece of art. It's not, I mean, it, you can see it stands as a sculpture by itself without you having to use it. But I kind of want people to enjoy my art on more levels than just an aesthetic experience. Um, that it has some kind of a fun function to it that I could imagine some, if someone bought this that they would have it in their home and they would get quite good at programming and making a real piece of music out of it. I'm in front of Spire by Richard Forbes. It's his second work on show in this exhibition. How do you go about turning a piece of rock into a sculpture? Well, with this particular stone, it isn't like Carrara or Greek marble. It has fissures running through it, so I had to use machines. Uh, there, there's a bit of handwork, but mostly machine work. It's reminiscent of, of some of my old wood carvings, which is all about linear texture and creating directional movement and giving a feeling of, of the vortex. I'm constantly working on that energetic vortex. Yeah. So now I'm trying to give this very static medium a sense of movement, a sense of shift and change. This is called Variations on a Helix. You've done variations before. Yes, I have, but this is the first really big one I've done. In my work, I've always kind of explored um, modules and repetition of modules and then unusual material to try and make meaning. And often it's the kind of plastic and the everyday found object that I'm drawn towards and think, well, what can you do with the chair? Um, it has lots of references. Um, the DNA strand, obviously, um, but the helix is a kind of cycle of life of one thing becoming another. In this context, it looks like a big um, plowshare going into the ground kind of thing. So all those kind of associations work really nicely for me. Is it different showing your work in a sculpture park versus showing it in a gallery? Uh, very much different because you've got to take into account the whole environment and you know, nature is incredibly strong in its visual capacity. So one's got to try and make something that either blends in with it or fights a little bit with it. And that's what I've achieved here, I think.